Today's 16-bit superheroes game is X-Men 2 The Clone Wars from Sega for the Genesis. It was produced by Ed Annunziata, who we had the pleasure of having on EP Live last year. This is an absolutely astounding game. It is an incredible 16-bit superhero title, and it honestly underscores the importance and the reason why I wanted to do this segment in the first place. <laughs> It picks up on a lot of learnings from the first X-Men game that Sega produced, which was actually a pretty decent game, but it was overly difficult. It uh, encumbered the player by not allowing them to use their mutant powers all the time. All of those deficiencies were scrubbed, and this game turns out being absolutely amazing. You can play as Wolverine, Psylocke, Beast, Nightcrawler, Cyclops, and Gambit. So you've got a nice collection of superheroes at your disposal. All of the characters have their mutant powers available to them at all times, so you can always be slashing as Wolverine. You could be throwing those cool cards as Gambit. You could be using the laser eyes of Cyclops at will. And honestly, this game turns Cyclops into a fantastic protagonist and it's one of the coolest versions of Cyclops that I've seen across any media because it's just so much fun to play as him. He's just blasting all kinds of bad guys all over the place. You can shoot in a bunch of different directions as well which is great. Gambit benefits from that as well. You can throw the cards in a bunch of different directions and also use his staff. Beast was a little bit more challenging to play as but of course he is tougher and he, he takes a little bit more damage and he doles out a little bit more damage as well. Was a little bit underwhelmed by Psylocke. Her uh, plasma sort of blast was a little bit underwhelming. I don't know a whole bunch about Psylocke, and maybe that's just it. Like, I'm not, like, the world's biggest Psylocke fan. I was a little underwhelmed by Nightcrawler's ability to bamf back and forth. It just felt like, okay, he can move here and he can move there, but his attacks weren't that great. I mean, it was cool to see him, and he's one of my favorite X-Men characters, but he just didn't do enough in comparison, especially to Cyclops and Gambit and Wolverine, who all felt really powerful. I really gravitated towards Wolverine because one of the cool things about playing as Wolverine in this game is that as this incredibly difficult experience, that's one thing that has carried over from the first X-Men game to the second one, it is still unbelievably challenging. There are lots of little health power-ups to pick up. They're sort of in the form of double healing. Uh, you know, the mutant symbols. But you can't earn extra lives. So you you start off with nine lives at the very beginning of the game. Wolverine, at least, will have some of his regenerative healing come back into play, and he will start to heal up a little bit. You know, it takes a long time, but slowly his health will regenerate, and that is uh, a welcome addition to the character. The game feels like a you know, almost like a solo outing for each one of these fantastic X-Men characters. It came out in 1995, and it was concurrent with a lot of the storylines that were happening in the comics back then, which is great. The Phalanx virus has infected a sentinel sort of base, and you'll see a giant sentinel that you have to kind of work your way through and eventually fight, and then you're going to be fighting this sort of bio computer kind of race, these creatures that mutate and form, and it's very effective, very cool stuff with that. And so you're going to be going to all kinds of different areas, you're going to fight against Exodus, you're going to fight against Magneto, and Magneto actually joins forces with the X-Men, and you can play as Magneto, and he's incredibly powerful. <laughs> And this game starts off in such a wonderful way. It has a cold open. So you start the game, you turn on the, the Genesis, or in my case, the uh, Mega SG, and boom, you're right into gameplay. You're in this snowy kind of winter wonderland, blasting away a giant sort of robot mechs and ninjas and stuff, of course, and trying not to uh, be in the, in the line of fire of these nuclear reactors <laughs> that you're hacking and slashing. It's awesome. It's 16-bit, man. That's the way it is. So you're dodging all of these fiery explosions and trying to just make your way to the end of it, you're like, what the hell is going on? I'm already into the game. And then you're going to be blasting across, you know, sort of cybernetic backgrounds, and then you're going into the Savage Land, so it's kind of like this prehistoric kind of vibe to it. You're going to be fighting a whole bunch of X-Men universe characters and bad guys, and it's all unbelievably well-crafted. <laughs> Kurt Harland, who was uh, one of the members of the band The Information Society, did the music for this game, and the music frickin' rocks! It's incredible! I had it crank through my stereo. Even 
know, this is a game from 95. It's still, I, I don't know, it's so vital and so alive and so fun. I mean, the sprite work is amazing in this game. Super big characters, lots of great animations, lots of details. Even the way, and I, I posted this to my Instagram, even the way that Wolverine will, you know, chunk into the wall and he'll climb up the wall with his claws and then he'll hang from the ceiling and continue to climb on the ceiling. Just super cool. Lots of great stuff, lots of great details there. <laughs> The only real knock I would give it is that it becomes insanely difficult. There's just projectiles coming at you from every direction and it just feels a little unfair. But, you know, the game is so polished and so sleek and so cool that it kind of makes you want to persevere and, and keep playing it and go back to it and take a break and then go back to it. <laughs> When I reflect on this game, and I, I'm playing all of these 60-bit superhero games today, you know, and how they feel and how they play today, this stands up with any of these, uh, you, you know, modern interpretations of classic scrolling games that I've been playing. There's lots of great indie developed titles, even lots of big studio titles that kind of take from the 16-bit kind of game design. But this stands up with any of the best of them today. It's still a fantastic game to play today, and it really makes me want Marvel and some other developers that have a lot of these licensed characters Characters and properties to build more games just like this one. I would love to see X-Men 3 just lift right from the design kind of philosophies of this game come out today. I think that would be insane. And this is such a great game to play with a friend. It's such a great game to play by yourself and to continually challenge yourself. <laughs> It's definitely a game I will never, ever get rid of. I love X-Men 2 The Clone Wars. I'm gonna give it a 9.5 out of 10. And if you've got a Genesis or a system that plays Genesis games, get this one.